A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Wednesday, June 10, Psalm 116. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs, the eighth chapter. The Lord possessed me to begin his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depth, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the foundations of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his commands, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him like a master workman. I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. And now, O son, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gate, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life, and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from the Father, and was going back to the Father, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That's why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, 
have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. A writing from the epitome of the formula of Concord. Therefore the Son of God has truly suffered for us, but according to the property of the human nature, which he assumed into the unity of his divine person and made his own, so that he could suffer and be our high priest for our reconciliation with God. As it is written in 1 Corinthians 2, 8, they have crucified the Lord of glory, and in Acts 20, 28, we are purchased with God's own blood. Therefore, we believe, teach, and confess that the Son of Man, according to his human nature, is really, that is, in deed and in truth, exalted to the right hand of the omnipotent majesty and power of God, because he was assumed into God when he was conceived by the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. And his human nature was personally united with the Son of the Most High. According to the personal union, he always possessed this majesty, but in the state of his humiliation, he dispensed with it and could therefore truly increase in age, wisdom, and favor with God and men. For he did not always disclose this majesty, but only when it pleased him. Finally, after his resurrection, he laid aside completely the form of a slave, not the human nature, and was established in the full use, revelation, and manifestation of his divine majesty. Thus he entered into his glory in such a way that now not only as God, but also as man, he knows all things, can do all things, is present to all creatures, and has all things in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, beneath his feet, and in his hands. As he himself testifies, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And as St. Paul states, he ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. He exercises his power everywhere omnipotently. He can do everything, and he knows everything. hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, grant us by your grace so to pass through this holy time of our Lord's passion that we may obtain the forgiveness of our sins 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the hour of trial and at the moment of trouble, you are there, Father. Hear us as we cry to you for the sake of the sick, the troubled in mind, the wounded in heart, and those who grieve, especially for Brandon, Vitra, Rick, June, June, Judy, Cheryl, Aaron, Pastor Brian, Claire, Zachary, Pastor Jim, Pastor John, Maddie, Daniel, Terry, Michelle, John, Janet, and Paul, for the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, Vitra, Rick, and June. Deliver them from afflictions as you will, and sustain them in hope with a patient heart and strength for the day. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.